Hey, everyone. We welcome into the studios today or on the air by way of Zoom, Coach Coach Roger Holmes, athletic director and head coach at the Dublin Fighting Irish Fieldhouse. Usually, Coach, I just want to start out by saying, Coach, I'm a, a essential worker for some reason, being media, and so I go by, and I'm trained over time, Coach, to look and see if Coach Holmes' truck's parked in front of that field house, and 9.8 out of 10, just about, your truck's there. And up until a week or so ago, uh, that's the way it was, Coach, even when school had been called back and we didn't know what was going to go on and it was a short period. But, Coach, how, you, how are you dealing, first of all, with this COVID lockdown? Well, I think the hardest thing for me, Ron, like everybody else, is the fact of the unknown. Uh, what I do as a coach and as a teacher, uh, like so many things that everybody else is dealing with right now, uh, we're at the mercy of this coronavirus. Uh, the, the hardest thing, and we're going to talk about some of those today, I'm sure, is <clears throat> not having a schedule, not able to prepare a schedule. You know, I, I did go into my office there for about a week, a uh, week and a half every morning, and tried to get some work done there in the office. And at some point you felt like uh, you're not being productive because you don't know exactly what you should be working on. And, and I'm not an individual with my football team or anything else that just enjoys wasting time. So what I've done is I've, I've been here, I've set my computer and everything up in my office in my house and I'm studying football. I'm doing a lot of webinars. We're talking a lot of football with other coaches across the country. Uh, I'm constantly, every day at five o'clock, I'm turning on the, to see what the president and, uh, and the task force uh, tells us as Americans what we need to be doing and how things are going and, and trying to make some sense of it and, and make some plans. Coach, you know, we, we, grow up in, in business and in, in your business and football and preparing, you got a plan A and you got a plan B, but you don't always have a plan C coach. And right now, you know, we're down to about plan C. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't do a whole lot on Twitter, but I, I posted the thing the other day because I was just sitting there watching. And, and again, I'm not commenting on who's right, who's wrong, who's telling you this, who's telling you that. Uh, I see what the president and the task force team are going through, and it just reminded me so much of what we go through as a coach. You, you have a game plan. You have an assistant and a group of coaches that are around you. You're trying to take their input. You're trying to make the best decisions that you can make for the good of your team, but you're constantly under scrutiny. You're constantly being questioned as a coach about, you know, what offense you run or what kids playing quarterback or who should be doing this and who should be doing that. How many times you've gone to football a game and, and there's that constant uh, outside source that, that is questioning the things that are going on and the decisions that are being made. Uh, it's very tough uh, to, to make decisions. And, and one of the coaches responded to me you know, on the Twitter thing, and there was something along the lines of having a plan. And I said, well, you know, to me, some of your most successful coaches are those guys that can go in at halftime and make adjustments because the game plan that you had was, was based on the evidence and the, and the things that you had studied and looked at in your film study and so on and so forth. And then when you get to the game on Friday night, uh, the variables that you thought you were dealing with were different. It might be pouring down rain. It might be a player on your team gets hurt. So you've got to be able to go in at half time and make adjustments. And, and I think this coronavirus is forcing people in all the decision-making places to have to make adjustments as we walk through this. Yeah, Coach, uh, you know you know the facts going into a situation, but, but man, don't they change sometimes? And, and that's what's going on here, just like you say in the game of life, the game of football. The situations are going to change, and you've got to adapt to them. But, Coach, um, one thing I know about you is you believe in teamwork. You believe that you do things that's best for the team first. And that's kind of the type of situation we're in now as a nation, isn't it? 
But I, I think you hit the nail on the head. You know, we constantly preach to our young men about uh, you have a role. Uh, you don't necessarily get to play the position that you want to play when you're on the Dublin High School football team. We're going to try to put you in a position that's in the best interest of our team. Uh, we want everybody to be successful. And when the team is successful, there's a lot more to go around. And, uh, you know, and I think right now for us as, as Americans, we're all part of this team right now. And that's the team that's trying to defeat the coronavirus. And to me, uh, I think our role as American citizens is to heed the advice and the warnings of the people that are in charge and to carry those out to the best of our ability. And in the end, walk away with a win. Yeah, Coach. You know, Coach, it's been said before that a good leader has to know how to be a good follower, too. And, mm -hmm. and in this situation, you're a leader. I mean, you are a leader in our community. There's no doubt about it. That's why we wanted to have a word from you today, Coach, because so many people value what you say. You've led so many young men, so many teams in our community to grow and to become men and to become productive citizens of, of our county, of our city, and, and move on and do things in not only in the United States, but throughout the world. But coach, you know when you when a leader, when the leaders of our country, our state say something, that's what we're all supposed to be doing, right? Well, there those people were put in those positions. Uh, you know, no different again. I keep looking back and, and playing this analogy through my mind uh, in the role of being a coach. Uh, they're put in that position to be those leaders, uh, you know, and, and hopefully the public opinion and the people that chose to put them in, the majority, as, as the way it works, uh, hopefully the majority was right in selecting the people that are going to lead, lead us through this. And you just have to, again, you have to have faith. You have to believe that uh, the good Lord is going to give us the signs and the, and the information that we need to be successful and, and just follow that. Coach, we're going to take a short break and be back. Y'all stay with us. Coach Roger Holmes when we come back. Hello, I'm Darren Keene with Clements and Keene Insurance. And many of us do not like to talk about it, but no family needs to go without a life insurance program. Show your family how much you love them by preparing in advance with a life insurance program. Clements and Keene Insurance can help you with term insurance or permanent insurance. Regardless of your need, your age, or where you may be in life, life insurance is a critical part of financial planning for you and your family. Please give us a call at Clements and Keene Insurance, 272-8019. The City of Dublin's Natural Gas Department is offering a $1,000 rebate on the purchase of a natural gas, stove, furnace and tank or tankless water heater for new construction homes or if you're remodeling your home. Individual rebates include natural gas tankless, up to $400 rebate and free gas service installation, natural gas tank, free 40 gallon or $200 rebate on other sizes, free gas service installation, natural gas furnace, $200 rebate, natural gas stove, $100 rebate, natural gas dryer, $100 rebate, natural gas grill, $100 rebate, natural gas logs, $100 rebate, maximum yearly rebate, no maximum. Save now, save later. Call the City of Dublin Natural Gas at 277-5048. Well, Coach Holmes, um, you know, you do so much. You, you mentor other coaches. You mentor, you know, young men. You, you feed into them. You put your coaches in a position to help your players. Uh, you you train those men up. You, you get them ready each and every week. You get them ready for life. Um, you counsel them, Coach. And from what I understand right now, uh, as, as we're on our online study time to be able to finish the year, uh, you you acted as a counselor. You're following up with these young men that, that are your players, your students, your young men, and encouraging them, aren't you? We're trying to. I wish that I had uh, had been a had been more ready for this situation. Some of our young men, it's been very hard to reach out to and stay in touch with them. 
Uh, I check with my coaches and they're reaching out to some of the kids because we've asked that each coach before our season started made sure that they had contact information for every kid that plays the position that they coach. Uh, you know, this is this is a tough time for us. You know, we, we were hoping at this point right now we were going to have had the opportunity to have our football banquet to pass out those state championship rings to recognize the individuals on the team for the for the year that they had had. And that's been put on hold. And, and for us, it's just a, it's a time when, you know, I think all of our high school students right now are, are dealing with some real tough things. You know, graduation is a milestone in everybody's life. And right now, school is already out. Graduation is on hold. Uh, whether they're actually even able to get together and hold the ceremonies or questions. <clears throat> I've been, struggling in my mind with do I want to go pick up these state championship rings and, and our plaques that are already put together for the banquet and, and try to find a way to distribute these things to our young men. But I want to hold out. I want to give it the time that we can. Obviously, this needs to be done uh, before our seniors leave and go off to college to play at the next level or to, to just to go to school. But so we're going to sit tight. We're going to hold on to those things and see if we can give these young men the proper uh, reward that night that their families can be with them, their friends can be with them. Uh, it's it's a tough decision and one that where I'm just kind of you know rolling with the flow and waiting for some indication as to when we may be able to do this and how we may be able to do it. Because, you know, these young men had a tremendous honor bestowed on them this year. They were going to get an opportunity to be the Grand Marshal for the St. Patrick's Parade. Gosh, what, a, what an honor for our team and, and uh, those type things. Well, the coronavirus shut it down. It shut down their spring sports. It's, it's, uh, it's a tough time, but again, faith, and, and uh, a lot of prayer, we're going to get through it. That's right, Coach. So a lot of times uh, in a situation that you don't know about, you have certain uh, young men, certain people, certain athletes, men, women alike, who perform even during this time. They find a way to work out. They find a way to get stronger. They find a way to push that body. They're not going to lay around and become a couch potato, Coach. But it's hard to draw that out of some people. I, I don't know how you're dealing with that right now, Coach. Well, you, there's no way to deal with it. You know, uh, self-motivation is is a quality of a winner. Uh, some people have to be pushed, and, and they're willing to be pushed. But the self-motivated individual, they're, they're kind of far and few between. And usually those are the individuals that turn out to be the most successful with whatever it is that they're trying to get done. Uh, you know, I think back to 2002 when I first got to Dublin, Georgia. Uh, it was the end of June. You know, people were talking about, well, when can you get your players back together? When can you, uh, you know, start doing things as a team? Well, Dublin had three days of spring practice that year before the coach that had taken over left and went back to Florida and spring practice ended. Uh, I think I interviewed in the middle of June and actually was hired and got to Dublin, Georgia the last week of June. Our kids, some of them, not a lot, had been showing up and, and they've been working. Uh, but when we got here, uh, we started working the last week of June and we had to install a complete new offense, a complete new defense. Everything was different in the kicking game. And we came in and said, you know, we're not going to do anything in the weight room. We're not running sprints. We're not going in the weight room. We have to spend our time, two hours and 30 minutes a day, on the field in the evening and install all of these things. And, uh, you know, as I go back to that, we never had more than 20 kids that would even show up on any given day. Uh, but we were able to take that football team, teach them what we needed to do on the football field. The conditioning was an issue. Uh, we were not able to, uh, we like to run out of gas early in the season, two or three 
games I remember one in particular was in Sandersville. We jumped out to a big lead and we just had to hang on because we were not in good shape. Uh, but that football team was able to go on and, and ended up playing for the state championship. That was a little bit tougher circumstances than what we're dealing with right now because all of the teams that we had played had had spring practice. All of them had had a strong uh, summer plan and the kids in and in the weight room. Well, the way this is going to play out for us, the collegiate level, the NFL level, for everybody, you're going to have some of your kids at home that are working extremely hard. They're the self-motivated type. The other group, hey, we're all starting from scratch whenever they turn us loose and tell us it's safe to get back together. Yeah, and coach, you got to think about that. There's nothing you can do about it. Of course, you you've admitted that, and everybody knows it. But and and it doesn't help. There's no consolation in saying, well, everybody else can't practice either. You know that doesn't do a whole lot for you trying to put together a team and and want to be where you need to be because, like we all know, you can't have that spring practice. You're not in the weight room now, putting on that heavy weight and getting stronger in this off season. Who knows when you're going to be able to get them back in the weight room? But if you can encourage those parents in some way to try to be that motivation, that mentor in the community, somebody that can at least reach out because we're supposed to be, you know, isolating at home. We, we only have home, but you can run down the block. You can stay in oh, good shape. There, there are so many things. I, I go back and I, we've told our kids the last day that we were at school, we knew they were fixing to send us home. And all the kids that we had in our weightlifting classes, we spent that time with them and, one of the greatest players ever that everybody around this area knows about was Herschel Walker. Herschel used to talk about, uh, he didn't lift weights. Herschel Walker did most of the things in his teenage years by using his own body weight. He, he did push-ups, he did sit-ups. Uh, every time a commercial came on on TV, he hopped down in the floor and once said he would do push-ups while commercials were on. Next time he would do sit-ups. You know, you can you can do your box jumps. Well, if you got steps in your house or steps on your front porch, go outside, get your jumps in. You can do one-legged squats. There's all you know. I saw a video yesterday where a guy basically had two pieces of wood or two rocks, and he was doing curls and he was doing push presses. He was doing all the things that he could do to the best that he had the opportunity to do it with. And those are those self-motivated people. And if they're not self-motivated, like you said, whether it be their mom, their uncle, their older brother, whoever it is that's motivating you, uh, let's, let's get going and continue to be the best we can be. Because to be quite frank with you, you know, the college recruiting season is going to be so different this year than what it has been the past several years, you know. And it kind of turned into uh, coaches were able to, they were there to watch you during spring practice. A big deal of that was to invite you to the camps. They wanted to get you on campus to be able to watch you work out and watch you run and see and really evaluate you in live settings. Well, I will be surprised if the colleges and universities are able to actually get those camps off the ground and running in the month of June, which is generally when all that takes place. Well, so now they can't get you on campus. I know I'm experiencing a lot of phone calls from coaches across the country now asking uh, about our prospects, which used to, they would show up in your office. Now they're calling because all of those coaches are at home, working from home. And they're having to evaluate your film now, okay? So, you know, we put out a plea uh, through Facebook for a lot of our kids uh, because that seems to be the easiest way to get the word out that coaches are calling, they're wanting your highlight videos. They're, they're going to evaluate you off of the highlights. Okay, and when I say evaluate you, they're not making their decision on whether they're, they're wanting to offer you or not. But here's the deal. When you think about a college football coach that has the whole south part of Georgia as his recruiting area, well, he can't put on and watch three game films 
of you. He doesn't have the time to go through all the names that he has. So what they basically do now is they throw up your highlight video, and within the first five or six plays, they decide whether they want to spend, they'll make a mark by your name saying, let him go. Don't worry about this kid or uh, send it to one of their GAs and say, hey, go through and take five of these game films and pull out the best and the worst that you see. It's all about their time management. So all of our football players in Dublin and Orange County or wherever you happen to be if you're watching this, what you need to be doing now is on your Huddle account, going through and identifying the plays that you think are important. You know, uh, I say this, and the Lord knows this is not a negative, okay? And I don't want anybody to take it this way. But, for example, with Romello Height in uh, his film last year, and, and we had this conversation with Romello. Romello played some wide receiver for us, but he wasn't being recruited as a wide receiver. He was being recruited as a defensive end. And when Romello put together his highlight tape, like five of the first 10 plays was him catching a pass at wide receiver. Uh, and I called and I talked to him, I said, Romello, I didn't say you need to take these off your highlight tape. They're, they're, your highlight film sometimes is for you and it's for the family and it's for people to see. But those first 10 plays that are on your highlight reel need to be getting after that quarterback, making sacks, pressure, you know, and, and those type things. And, and he went back and he reworked it. And the next thing you know, there were another 10 or 12 offers that came in almost immediately. So how you put that highlight video together is very important. If you're an offensive lineman, they don't want to just see you run block. They need to see you pass block. They need to see you run block. One of the things that when you're evaluating the lineman is how much time does he spend on the ground? They don't like to recruit offensive linemen that are on the ground a great deal of the time. It, it, it makes it appear that their athleticism is not what it needs to be. If you're a running back, they don't want to see you run the football. They want to know, can you pass protect? Are you able to take a defensive end and pass block against this kid? Because they're looking for a complete back, not just show me all five of your 50 yard runs for touchdowns, show me a dominating block or two, you know, as a quarterback. Uh, show me the deep throw, show me the short throw. Show me your check off at the line of scrimmage. Show me your knowledge in that film. So putting those things together and having the time to do it is, is invaluable to these young men who want to get recruited. And now, the last thing. A lot of our individuals right now are being required to do a lot of online uh, coursework. Well, your academics are still going to be the number one thing. It doesn't matter if you're the best player in the state. If you don't have the grades and the academics it takes to get you where you need to be, you're not going to have the opportunity. Uh, again, and getting that done, Ron, at an early stage of your career is so invaluable. You know, we, we had this year two or three young men that would have had many more choices in their athletic and academic education had they had the qualifying test score a year earlier in their junior year not having to wait till their senior year. Because when that recruiter comes around to recruit you, going into in the spring of your junior year, one of the questions, all two questions that I'm gonna get asked, number one, can I get a copy of his transcript? And number two, what are his test scores? Those, those two questions are always gonna be asked. Then they, you know, sometimes it's before we talk about the athlete, Sometimes it's after, because again, they're not recruiting one player. They're evaluating at this stage of the game, 50 young men that play the same position that you do. And they're not, they don't have the ability to wait and find out in December, whether you're actually gonna have the grades it takes for them to sign you in February. 
Coach, you feed into so many young men. You're giving good advice for people, not only for Dublin players, but you love to see an athlete succeed, whatever the sport is, but you love football, no doubt about it. But that's just great information, again, Coach, for people to look at. A lot of times you don't think about that. You, as a young man, family member, you think about what's making them look good at the moment. But that's excellent advice on all positions, Coach. It really is. Hey, we won't take another short break and be back with Coach Holmes. Don't go anywhere. products and installations since 1985. That's Four Seasons. Hi, I'm Pam Tillery. And I'm J.D. Tanner. And we are downtown at the Fred Roberts Hotel at Emily Kite's office. And we're on the balcony overlooking historic downtown Dublin, where we have local boutiques, great restaurants, and gorgeous architecture. And we would love to share this view with you at your next closing. So give us a call. I'm Pam Tillery. And I'm J.D. Tanner. And we are the TNT Group. First Lawrence Bank invites you to experience banking at its best. Whether you have personal or business needs, we're a full service bank big enough to handle all of your banking needs and small enough to provide you with that personal touch you've grown to expect from a community bank like First Lawrence Bank. Looking forward to your future, that's First Lawrence Bank in Dublin and Dexter, member FDIC. All right, back with Coach Holmes. Coach Holmes, some, uh, some of us uh, as men, and some women alike, but mostly guys, we think we the toughest thing walking around a lot of times and stuff won't affect us. Uh, I, you know, I'm healthy, I'm young, I'm strong. This thing is not gonna affect me. What do you say to people walking around like that in our community, Coach? I think if you uh, have that type of attitude about anything in life, you're asking for trouble. Uh, you know, people get humble all the time. Uh, we, we all, we talk to our football players consistently. We all have strengths. We all have weaknesses. The, the key to being successful to me is how, how much can you raise your weakness? You know, whatever your weakness is, if we can take everybody's weakness and improve it. See, it's harder to improve on the things you're good at than it is to improve on the things you're not good at. So if we can raise the level on the things that we're not good at for the overall of the team, just think how much we've improved as a whole football team. You know, none of us statistics say, and, and I'm in that category, that's not a good category with this virus. Uh, right at 60, uh, I'm diabetic. So, you know, I have those underlying uh, what they call them, conditions that, that uh, make you high, a higher rate for this. Uh, our young people need to understand as well as, as anybody. When we're congregating, we're asking for trouble. And I think the message that everybody is trying to uh, put out there is I may be a 17-year-old young man that can lift the house and run like the wind and, and in great physical shape and healthy. But if I, kind of, if I contract that, that virus and I turn around and I take it to my home and I've got a grandmother or a grandfather or my mom or dad who happen to have some of these underlying characteristics, I don't think there's anybody out there that would do anything to ever harm one of their loved ones. And nobody wants to do that. But at the end of the day, if we're not adhering to what the people are telling us that this virus is capable of doing, uh, we're not showing the respect to those family members. Yeah, great advice, Coach. Again, you're always solid on what you what you offer, um, Coach. What are we looking for? I mean, not everybody's looking forward to the ring ceremony, to the uh, you know, to the opportunity to recognize these young men. It will happen, won't it, Coach? It's, it's going to happen. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have some patience, kind of like. Uh, running the football, you know, you can't get it all done in one play. Uh, 
This football team is a very resilient group of young men. Uh, I hope all of them are being safe. I want to make sure that our seniors, obviously, have the opportunity to have the recognition that they deserve. And I'm hoping that uh, the motivation to have an opportunity to do that again is what's got our young men out there right now doing everything they're capable of doing to continue to improve daily. And coach, you mentioned that earlier about you know not not exposing your weakness. We don't want to expose ourselves to anything that's going to make us weaker. If we're competing, we're not going to want to be exposed at whatever that issue is. We don't want to be seen at that point. We want to we want to be strong and stay strong in areas where we are strong and not show that weakness, coach. And you know, for us to get out there and expose ourselves to things, that, that's why we wanted to have you on, Coach, because, again, you fed into so many people's lives. Adults uh, look to you for leadership. You, you've been a real man in our community, uh, a real leader. And then these young men who have grown up under you. I have talked to so many uh, fighting Irish over the years who have said it's the toughest thing I ever did. I've been in the military. Uh, I've done this and that. It is, it prepared me for, uh, to be able to handle the tough things, the opportunity to really get down and have to work hard and work through issues. And that's what we're doing now, Coach. But thank you so much for what you, what you have done and what you're going to continue to do. Uh, you put together a staff that's just incredible. You know, one of our last shows, we had the opportunity to, to uh, interview uh, all your coaches, uh, all your the individual coaches, and then you as well. And, that program has been watched so many times, been watched online just thousands of times, Coach. But it's, um, it's a mindset that you have of, of being stronger, being better. But you got to be wise to start out with, don't you? Don't need to make bad decisions. What I, again, no matter what it is, whether it's financial decisions or relationship decisions or whatever it is, uh, and when you make a bad decision, you've got to be willing to accept the fact that you made the bad decision and turn around and do what needs to be done to correct it. Uh, we've got a great bunch of coaches. Uh, to my knowledge, every one of them is going to be back next year. I think that uh, that will be the first time for me ever, and I think that really helps us going into this environment of unknown uh, I think Coach Collins put it best the other day when he was talking with some some of his coaching buddies and they were talking about, well, we've got to do this, we've got to add this, we wanted to change to this. And he said, well, for us, it, it's not going to be that hard because we do what we do. And and we're, we're going to coach our kids to be successful in what we do. So the day we're able to get back to work, then hopefully it's back to the routine and our kids are really uh, – excited because I think that's going to be that way for everybody. Uh, they're going to want to get back. They want to get out of the house. They're going to want to work. They're going to want to, you know, be a part of what's going on. Uh, the fans, everybody's going to be excited. Uh, now, I think, uh, you know, some of my biggest concerns at this point is dealing with uh, how to get started. You know, what's going to happen when we do get started? All right, we go back to school and we're fixing to play the first game of the season and one of our football players or an administrator or a cafeteria worker or a janitor or whoever in our school comes down and tests positive for the coronavirus. How, how does that work then? Do they, do they quarantine everybody in the school for two weeks and you're not able to play or... We went and played, we played Dodge County and week one right now is the plan. What happens if we play on Friday night and someone from Dodge County football team tested positive for the coronavirus on Monday or Tuesday of the next week? Now does that isolate everybody on our team because we have played them and come in contact with them? Those are a lot of our issues that uh, still have to be worked out. Uh, but I, again, I trust the individuals that have got to make these tough decisions to tell us when that time is right. Yeah. Coach, again, we appreciate it. We want you and Bernadette, the entire family, to stay safe. You meant so much to our community. You still do. And again, stay safe. And thanks for your time, Coach. And go Irish.
Thanks, Ron. Appreciate it.